Hello, I hope you're well. I'm Caitlin Fotheringham and at the time of recording we are in a global pandemic where it is really important for you to wash your hands. But do people wash their hands for as long as they should? Perhaps, perhaps not. Either way, today I am going to make an automatic soap dispenser that counts down from 20 seconds the recommended hand washing duration and sings a song about hand washing, keeping you entertained and well informed as you wash. Ba -ba 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 -ba. But before we start making, most automatic soap dispensers are flawed. Why are they flawed? Let me explain. Here is my proof of concept, a very messy breadboard, but it works. Most automatic soap dispensers use infrared sensors like this to detect if a hand is present. This module has an infrared LED which emits light of a frequency too high for us to see and a photodiode which detects when that infrared light is reflected off a nearby object. This all-inclusive module is pretty good. If my hand is within the threshold distance, its onboard green LED will light up as we can see. And if I remove my hand, it goes off. However, this only works if the nearby object is somewhat reflective. Say I was busy potting plants and my hands got covered in soil, a situation where hand washing is really quite important. In that case, the module may not detect me. You may be aware that black absorbs heat. Well, it also absorbs the infrared emitted by this module. Let me simulate soiled hands with my hairbrush. As you can see, no matter how close it gets to the sensor, the module fails to detect the object. To solve this problem, my unconventional soap dispenser will use ultrasound to detect if a hand is present. Did you hear ultrasound and think babies in the womb? Same concept. <laughs> One of these cylinders, called the trigger, emits sound at a frequency too high for us to hear, much like the infrared light from the other module. Although we cannot sense it, it still exists. If there is an object within four meters of the sensor, the other cylinder, called echo, receives a reflection of the sound wave emitted by the trigger. The time it takes for this sound wave to be reflected back depends on how far away the object is from the sensor. If it's very close, it doesn't take much time, and if it's further away, it will take longer. This information is then processed using maths to work out fairly accurately how far away the object is from the sensor. So, as long as your hand doesn't absorb an abnormal amount of sound, this sensor's got us covered. Now, let's see it in action. My proof of concept circuit. What should happen? The Arduino Nano should process the data from the ultrasound sensor. If I'm within 10 centimeters of it, a song should start playing and the display should count down from 20 seconds. Once the countdown's complete, the display should show how many pumps of soap are left in the soap dispenser. Hand at the ready, let's give it a go. Great, those features work, but a few things. One, it doesn't dispense any soap. Not yet, but I have a plan. Utilizing this extremely overkill solenoid. This beast is too powerful to be driven from the Arduino directly, but I'll show you what it does with a 12 volt supply. If we put 12 volts across its terminals, the coil of wire energizes, inducing a magnetic field which forces the shaft out. Wanna see? Yeah, quite lively, which brings me on to powering the device. The device is going to be located in a bathroom where there are no power sockets, 
which means the device will have to be battery powered. I opt to use a 9 volt rechargeable battery because 9 volts is within the Arduino suitable input voltage range, so we're good there. And 9 volts can still actuate the solenoid, but with not quite as much gusto, which may be a good thing. As I said, the Arduino cannot drive the solenoid directly, but it can switch on a MOSFET, which can give the solenoid the 9 volts it deserves. The plan is to create a casing for the soap and all the electronics with the solenoid shaft strategically aligned above the soap dispenser's plunger. To stop the solenoid pushing the housing upwards instead of the plunger downwards, the casing will need to have a top and a bottom, but more on the casing design later. 2. The song that played isn't about hand washing. True, the proof of concept just uses royalty free music. I need to record some rhymes. Therefore, I read the NHS's hand washing guide so I'd know the government approved hand washing procedure to proclaim in song. Then I video called my friends for some inspiration. Instead of having to come up with a unique chord sequence, they suggested changing the lyrics to DJ Casper's Cha Cha Slide. <laughs> Copyright concerns. If the lyrics are changed enough, it should count as a parody, which comes under fair use. So copyright concerns no more. My faraway friends helped me come up with these lyrics. I reckon they match the NHS's guidelines pretty well. Once I finish going over my plan, I'll get those sweet lyrics recorded and onto the device. And three, the number of remaining pumps of soap left is a lie because there was no soap. This is true, it's a proof of concept. I'll explain what the code does in detail later on, but I'll go over how I aim to work out how many pumps of soap are left. The solenoid shaft should move the same distance every time the device detects a hand, which in turn should push the soap dispenser's plunger down the same amount every time, dispensing the same amount of soap every time. To calculate how many pumps of soap are in a new bottle, we'd need to find out the volume of soap dispensed per plunge and divide the total volume of soap in the bottle by that number. We can make a variable, which I'll call pumps left, that will store this number. Each time the plunger plunges, that number will decrease by one. But what if the battery dies? We wouldn't want the counter to reset itself every time the battery is replaced. To solve this problem, I propose storing the variable in a non-volatile memory. I'll show you how to do so in the code later on, but this would mean that removing power or resetting the Arduino would not reset the number of pumps left. But what if you need to replenish the soap and reset the counter? Don't worry, I've got you. I've included a very satisfying tactile switch. If you push it down, it resets the number of pumps left and you're good to go. That's my plan. Next up is the casing. I don't have access to a 3D printer or a laser cutter, but I do have access to clear acrylic offcuts, white acrylic, and a jigsaw to cut pieces out to size. I was unsure of what color to make the casing, so I reached out to the good people of Instagram, follow me at Caitlin F. Ham, and proposed the question in a poll, the results of which I have here. Most people voted for a clear casing, allowing us to admire the electronics within. Now that I know the case needs to be transparent, I can start to sketch out the design. All right, now that we have the basic shape, we'll need to work out the dimensions, allowing for component size and material availability. Some of my offcuts have cracks in them, so <laughs> the whole sheet isn't usable. We'll also need to decide how high up to mount the solenoid for a good squirt of soap each time. So I'll need to experiment with the plunger now. It seems that if the plunger travels anywhere from 6mm to 1cm, we get a good squirt of soap. And now I'll need to measure my offcuts to see how much material is available. 
Now that I know how much material I have at play, I can create a more accurate model of my sketch in Illustrator and make templates for my acrylic from that. Let's do it! Right, now I know what pieces of acrylic I want to make this model with. I'll need to transfer those shapes onto my offcuts. Let's give that a go, marking them out. Now it's time to get the jigsaw out and cut them out. I can put my mask back on for this. There wasn't quite enough overhang to use the jigsaw. Thankfully I have a rotary tool. This shelf, this window will have the little display here behind it. This on top, I'm going to sand the edges nice and smooth and make everything a bit more square. I'm just filing the worst of it and then I'll get the sandpaper to make everything smooth. Alright, that's me sanded and filed everything. We're not finished with the mechanical hardware. I kind of fancy a break from all this stir, so I'm going to record the wrap. Let's go! <laughs> Let me just take my hair down. Let's get straight into it. Everybody wash your hands! Wash, 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 wash your hands! <laughs> I have done a lot of cringy things in my time and that was certainly up there. I'm going to export it as a WAV file and get that on the SD card that will go into the device. Moment of truth. Okay, that sounds quite tinny, but it works. I might refine some things and get it working better, but <laughs> that's pretty promising. Having recorded and produced that absolute hand-washing banger, I'm going to go back to the mechanical hardware and mark out the holes I'll need for the electronic components. Here are my pieces. I have two long bits that will be the sides of the soap dispenser. Two of these identical pieces nearly. <laughs> One unfortunately has a crack in it. That wasn't me today. This is what the solenoid will sit on. It won't be quite centered. I need to create a hole for its shaft and I'll take this apart. I know it works. I need holes for the sonar. It will go here. I mean this doesn't look very circular but we can fix that. <laughs> Here are all my plastic pieces with the holes cut out and my components fit nicely inside. Before I solder anything, I'm just going to sketch up a quick schematic so I know what connections to make. With the schematic complete, I now know where to solder everything. Let's get to it. Hello, editing Caitlin here. Originally, I perhaps over-optimistically soldered everything onto header pins, grouping common connections together, which made fault-finding rather difficult when I gave the device power and nothing worked. I then tried again using VeraBoard, where I could test each component as I soldered it in place, but still the soldering took a bit of time, so mid through I ordered in some jumper wires, which comparatively made assembling the circuit a breeze. Some connections were still soldered, including those of the NPN transistor and diode, however most of them could be quickly swapped out. For common connections, such as 5 volts and ground, I used chalk block connectors, or to give them their proper name, terminal blocks, to connect multiple wires with stripped ends together. With this pile of wires, we're almost done. Though I noticed something bad happened. My transistor leg ripped off, and I think that's partly to do with this being a single core wire, so it's not very flexible. So I shall desolder this from the speaker and replace it with this lovely flexible multi-strand wire. I have more transistors, luckily. Sad news, the 9 volt battery doesn't have enough oomph to power both the musical goodness and the solenoid at the same time. So we have a couple of options. Option one is do away with the solenoid and you'd have to manually pump the soap but you'd still get the good tunes. And option two, it does everything, suspends the soap automatically, sings the song, counts down, all that good stuff, but it would have to be wall powered. Can't always find a plug socket in a bathroom, but hey ho, there we go. There's a third option which I've gone for. It can either be battery powered with limited functionality or wall powered with full functionality. And the way I have achieved this this 
is by having both the battery connector and a 12 volt DC plug. The big concern is do not connect them both at the same time, otherwise bad things will happen. But yeah, once I have soldered the wire and the transistor, added a bit of heat shrink tubing, make it all nice and tidy. You just need to glue the casing together, shove the components in, find out how many pumps of soap are in a bottle, and update the code, and that will be us finished. Let me heat up my soldering iron. That should be the epoxy dry now. We've got film on the acrylic, that's why it looks blue rather than clear. So now it's time to peel to reveal. Oh yes. Here we go. All see through, nice and nice. There's a little bit of purple pen down here, but I'm sure I can get rid of that with some nail varnish remover. Let's uh, plug it in and see if it works. Turned at the ready. <laughs> that looks promising. I have a few soaps to test. This is the one I modeled the device on because I like the smell. However, its plunger is quite stiff. We might need quite a lot of force to push this down. I have more soaps. I have this one and this one as well as this one. We can't see the level of soap in here. You can only guess really how much soap's left. The other ones you can see roughly how much soap's left in the container. So I reckon we can get the display to display how many pumps-ish are left in here. But first I'll test the soap dispenser out with a different soap so we can keep this bottle intact. Let's start with the one I designed it for, this nice smelling one. In you go. This one might be too hard to pump. Try this one. We got some. Right now, after it counts down from 20 seconds, it displays zero because our imaginary bottle of soap has run out of soap, so there are no pumps left. So let's test out the reset button. After the countdown, it should go to 99. So let's give that a go. The reset button's just here. If I hold this down and then actuate it, it should have 99. Well, I, I was uh, I was dancing and <laughs> see what it said. Let's try with this and hopefully it will say 98. 98, perfect. These different soap dispensers all have different springs in them with different spring constants, which represents the stiffness of the spring. So this one, I'd imagine, has a spring constant a lot greater than this one. This one is very easy to push down, whereas this one, although it smells fantastic, you need quite a bit more force. The viscosity, the thickness of the soap may also play a role. We need to find out how much soap is in this bottle. I don't have a pipette or anything to do that very precisely, but I do have a method in mind. Firstly, I'll wash this soap off my hand. I have a selection of measuring spoons, so I'm going to find out how many pumps of soap it takes to fill up the one teaspoon, five milliliters. This isn't the most precise method, but it should give us a fair indication and certainly be a lot more helpful than not seeing the soap at all. Let's put this in and give it a go. One, just reset it here. Okay, that was 19 pumps to get to 5 milliliters. It doesn't seem to dispense much soap per pump at all, but you don't need that much soap to wash the virus and germs away. So this could potentially be a good thing. 19 to get 5 milliliters. How many milliliters per pump? Where is my calculator? Ah! Got it! So 5 milliliters per 19 pumps. If we take that pair as a divide sign, so 5 divided by 19 equals 0 0.26315 blah 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 milliliters of soap per pump. That doesn't seem like very much at all. Perhaps we should try to adjust it so we get more soap out. So the soap 
claims to have 250 milliliters, 250 milliliters in here, take away the 5 milliliters we pumped out, divided by the 0 0.26, how many milliliters per pump, we have 931 pumps left in this bottle. I could update the code, but there's a bit of a problem. If I'm using the non-volatile memory on the Arduino, not the SD card where the song is stored, the greatest number of pumps of soap we can store in a memory address, it's 255. So we may want to rejig this. This blue one loves to dispense soap. So we can see how much soap we get with this and possibly code the device for this soap instead. And it's my favourite colour. For the blue soup, we only needed 8 pumps to get 2.5 milliliters. It's still not very much soap per pump. 2.5 divided by 8. 0 0.31. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem it will be quite so straightforward to display the number of pumps left. We have a few options here. We can either scrap the idea or write it to the SD card. We have an SD card anyway for the song, but I think we'll leave it as is. Let's just use a clear bottle where we can see how much soap's left. From all angles, thanks to this soap dispenser, thanks to people voting for a clear soap dispenser, I'm going to tweak the code now and I'll explain all the lines at the end, don't you worry. I've reprogrammed it, so now we should get two pumps of soap. So let's head to the bathroom and test it out. Looks like we got quite a bit more soap that time, so I'm going to remeasure how many pumps it takes to fill up a teaspoon, and maybe we can in fact program how many pumps of soap are left. So I'll do that now and show you the results. One. That looks like a very level one teaspoon to me, five milliliters. So that was two pumps, two of my double pumps. So I can reprogram this. I will have enough space in the memory. I've redone the calculations for this guy, who we can't see inside. So I'll load that up into the soap dispenser, which is so good because you can just swap it pretty much any bottle, as long as it's got a diameter less than 7.5 centimeters, or you can't turn it at an angle that allows it to fit in this slot. It pretty much accommodates all soups. <laughs> that one didn't quite produce as much as the last one. Shame. A double pump was quite generous for the blue soup. If we work it out at 2.5 milliliters per wash, and there's 250 milliliters in a new bottle, that gives us 100 washers per bottle, which we can store in the memory. So we'll give the reset button a go. It should reset to 100, but after the wash, we will see 99 on the display. This isn't a new bottle, of course. We'd need to calculate how much soap we've used, or just put a new bottle in. But remember, it's always good to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Let's give the reset button a go. Everybody wash your hands. Wash, 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 wash your hands. 99, please. Hey, the reset button works. Fantastic. There are fewer than 99 pumps of soap left in here, well, double pumps at least, but it's good to know that the counter works and we can reprogram it to suit other bottles of soap. This power cord may pose itself as a bit of a problem, so we have a solution in the form of a battery. We'll have to manually pump it, but with the battery we can still get the music and the countdown. Good that it works. Now let's look through the code that makes it all happen. Welcome to Arduino C with me, Caitlin. I've tried to comment this code as well as I can. From the top, let's go. Hashtag include lots of libraries. Some very nice people have programmed libraries for our modules so we don't have to code everything from scratch. Many thanks goes to them. Right now, we're just setting things up 
inputs and outputs, readying serial communication, and making pumps left become equal to the numbers stored in the zeroth memory address of the Arduino's EEPROM, non-volatile memory which won't forget that number when there's no power. We've got a little fault-finding line here, just to check the SD card works. Then, we set the speaker's volume. And onto the main loop. To begin with, we make the screen nice and bright. Then, the Arduino checks to see if the reset button's being pushed down. If so, the number of pumps left stored in the EEPROM is reset to 100. And if not, the code carries on. This is the hand detecting line. If an object is between 2 and 10 centimeters from the ultrasound module, the hand washing fun will begin. And if not, the display shows nothing and the code returns to the start of the main loop. For the hand washing fun, we dispense the soap by switching the MOSFET on, which then activates the solenoid. Then, we state that the speaker is connected to pin 9, making use of a library, we play the hand washing song. Afterwards, we wait a second to ensure the solenoid shaft is fully deployed before making it inactive for half a second, allowing its spring to return the shaft to its original position. We then turn the solenoid on again for a second squirt of soap, then turn it off. After two seconds, the countdown begins. The countdown uses a for loop, with I starting at 20 and decreasing by one every time the loop cycles until we get to zero seconds. During this loop, the screen displays the present number of I, waits a second, then goes back to the start. At this point, we finished washing our hands, so we prepare to display the number of pumps of soap left. To stop a nonsense number being displayed, if the original number of pumps of soap in the bottle was underestimated, the number of pumps left is only decreased by one after the hand washing if the number of pumps left stored in memory is greater than one. We then write this new number of pumps left to memory and display it for three seconds before checking for hands once more. This cycle continues until the device is no longer powered. Hmm, I think the soap dispenser would like to say something. for watching this video I do hope you enjoyed it please leave it a like if you did subscribe just do what the soap dispenser says and I hope you have a wonderful time until I see you again ciao for now <laughs>